get her just keeps on getting better with her hand in mine so we're walking by the shore Hey there ladies, so today we are actually going to be doing a how to support other women video. Yes. So if you guys follow our vlog channel, like me and my husband's, then you know we've had some issues with this in comments. <laughs> and I know that personally as a woman, we seem to have issues with it a lot in real life as well with mm -hmm. those surrounding us. Yeah. So yeah, so Brittany and I have been talking about doing this video since before I think we even knew you were coming, right? Yeah, I said someday when we do a video collab, we should do this video. Yeah, and so we were finally like, well, we're here, so we're gonna do a video. There's like five basic, that's weird to hold that way, five <laughs> basic um, kind of points of how we think you might be able to help be supportive of other women. Um, and so we're just gonna kind of name them off. We each kind of came up with two. The third one she had said, but it was also the one I was thinking, so it'll just be kind of both of ours. But we're gonna kind of add in on all the subjects, so it just won't be her talking about hers and you talking about mine. Yep. Yes, so we're gonna hop right in because we talk a lot. Yes. So this could be a long video. Yes. <laughs> so Brittany is going to do her two first, and then I'll do my two, and then we'll do our combined one at the end. So my first one is weed your garden and that's a quote from my friend Betsy and I just think <laughs> it's genius because the thing with friends is that you can choose who you're friends with and yes. if you picture your life like a garden, if there's a weed in your garden, you get rid of it. You want to just leave it there. I'm talking about <laughs> the obnoxious weeds because yes. I will say that I love dandelions. Those yes. are like my favorite flower, really, really? and that's a weed. Huh. So if you have a weed in your garden, like a really obnoxious one, you would pull it out. And I feel like sometimes girls are friends with girls, even though the, you know yeah. it's a toxic relationship. And you know as soon as you walk away, one or both of you are talking about the other. Yeah. In a bad way. <laughs> yeah, and like when you hang out with that person, you feel drained instead mm -hmm. of uplifted. Yes. So if you have a friend that uh, is just toxic in your life, it may be that you just need to talk it out. Because sometimes you're friends with somebody for a really long time, and I'm not saying if you have one argument with that person that Bye -bye. you should just get rid of them. Because <laughs> that's not how friendships work. Yeah. You should definitely love each other for your flaws mm -hmm. and for the things that you love about them. Um, so you shouldn't just like cast them out as soon yeah. as they're friendship, annoying. Friendship is just like marriage. Just because you get in an argument doesn't mean you get a divorce. Yes. You need to work through it first. <laughs> yes. But there are some friendships where it's just toxic. Mm -hmm. And if it's gotten to that point where you don't like who you are when you're around them and it's just not a good point in your life, then you need to just weed your garden and unfortunately get rid of your friend. It doesn't mean that you have to be mean about it. You yeah. don't have to send them a hateful letter. You can <laughs> no, just No, that would not them. be being um, a good person. No. <laughs> don't do that. No. And I have done this a couple times in my life and I just kind of gradually tapered off. Mm -hmm. I didn't send them anything hateful or anything like that. I just said, you know what? You're probably not the best person when you're around me. I'm not the best person when I'm around you. We're bringing out the worst in each other. It's a toxic relationship. And for me, I feel like I would rather get out of the relationship yeah. before it gets to the point where like, we're having a cat fight. Yes. So you can just be nice about it and just kind of slowly back out of that relationship. Mm -hmm. So then the second point that I had is to, uh, I saw this on a TV show once, it was a counseling TV show, and this mother and daughter were always fighting and bickering. And the counselor told them that before they say anything to each other, they need to think about what their intent is with that comment. Mm -hmm. So like if your mom, if you're not getting along with your mom and your mom is wearing a jacket and you, were to, and you don't like the jacket and you say to her, oh, that's an interesting jacket, before you say that, think what is my intent with this comment? Mm -hmm. My intent with this comment is to show her that I don't really like her jacket and I'm gonna do it in like a passive aggressive way. And she didn't ask you if you yeah. like the jacket or not. <laughs> and so if your intent is anything negative or just doesn't have a point to it, if it's anything but positive, then don't say it. Yeah. So before you say a little comment, because I feel like friends give each other digs a lot. <laughs> And it's like your best friends, but yet you're always like giving each other like little digs. And yeah. that's not being Friendly. supportive. That's no. not being a true friend. No. Your friend should always uplift you. You should always make each other feel happy and comfortable. And, and it's, not, it's not to say you shouldn't have constructive criticism with them, but you should yes. wait till they come to you. Uh, yes. it, it shouldn't be, I mean, obviously if you see something serious going on in their life that you think needs to be addressed, 
you can address it in an appropriate manner. Yes. Um, but that's more serious topics. Like a, I just don't like your jacket. <laughs> There isn't yeah. a point, you know what right. I mean? They like their jacket, and right. that's all that matters. <laughs> yeah, so if you were to have that thought in your head to say, interesting jacket, and then you realize that it's something other than being positive, just don't say it, yeah. because you shouldn't, if you're friends with someone, or even if it's your mother, or your sister, or your sister-in-law, or your neighbor, you should never say something that is with the intent to drag them down. Yeah. That's just sending out negativity. And when you send out negativity, you're gonna get negativity back. So you're just punching yourself in the face. Oh, what was I reading the other night? I wanna say it was a blog post about like, how to be the friend everyone wants to be friends with. Oh, we should read that before we do this. <laughs> <laughs> I can't remember um, what I was reading or where it was, um, but it was basically saying that if you wanna be that friend everyone wants to be around, you want to be that type of friend that you want to be around. You know what I mean? What goes around comes around. Yes, so always bringing negativity to people. They're not going to want to be around you, and all you're going to get is that negativity back. Yeah. So I don't remember what the blog post was. I want to say it was like on Facebook or something. Finally yeah. found something useful on Facebook. And it's like the golden <laughs> rule. Treat yes. people how you would like to be treated. So if you're friends with someone, just always try to be uplifting and positive. And if you are going to give them a dig or you're going to make a comment, like just don't do it. Yeah. Your purpose, your job as a friend shouldn't be to like drag that person down or make them feel bad or anything like that. Mm -hmm. So if you're doing that or if somebody else is doing that to you, just stop it. <laughs> so the next one that I have is basically putting yourself in someone else's shoes. When it comes down to that fact, it's impossible for you to do. And I think a lot of women um, look at someone and they think that they know exactly what they've gone through, exactly what their thought process is, and everything that they do in their life. And unfortunately, that's just impossible. Well, maybe not unfortunately. I don't think every woman wants you to know exactly <laughs> what they're thinking or what they've been through. Yeah. Um, but it's important to remember that you see a small side of every woman, even if it's your best of best friend. Mm -hmm. um, it's impossible for you to actually walk in someone's shoes and know exactly what they've been through. And so for you to sit there and judge them based on just what you see is not really fair to them. Now, for <laughs> you. Yeah, it's not fair to you or them. It's just a pain in the butt for you to always be sitting there judging someone instead of just being their friend. Yeah. Um, and then obviously it's not fair to them because they're being judged when you don't really fully know the whole story of what's gone on. It's going to be just impossible for you to fully understand why they act or why they think the way that they do. So, yeah. And I will say that there's been times in my life where I thought when I saw somebody going through something and they weren't doing it the way that I thought I would have, mm -hmm. I kind of tried to put myself in their shoes and think, oh, I wouldn't have done it like that. I don't know why they're doing it like that. And then like years later, I will be in similar shoes. And even though I never thought that I would have gone through that, like I find myself in their position. Yeah. And then it hits me like, that's the light why bulb they did goes, that they goes did. Off. Yeah, I'm like, oh, I'm, I kind of would do exactly what they did. Now yeah. that I'm in, this position, I see why they did it the way that they did it. So sometimes you think that you can put yourself in your in yeah, their shoes, but you really can't. Yeah, that's another thing. So even if you knew what exactly was going on in their life that was causing them to have issues or struggle in certain areas, they are the only person that really understands what it's doing to their mind, and you, you don't. It's just impossible. Yeah, so if you have been in the same exact situation as someone and you handled it completely differently, well, what comes into play there is that you're a completely different person. Yes. And Every person you have is different. to appreciate that everyone is different, everyone has different needs, everyone has a different personality, mm -hmm. everyone has a different background. So all of those things come into play as to how they react to that situation. And yeah. so you really just can't judge someone unless you are in their exact shoes. Meaning you're them. Yeah. And that's impossible. And that's impossible. Yeah. So just be supportive. Like yeah. Why do you have to like force your will on them? Yes. I think so many friends do that where they see their friend doing something and they just try so hard to get them to think exactly how they think. Yeah. And you have to love your friend for the individual person they are and they're not gonna be you, they're not gonna think like you and just be supportive. And if they're doing something that you think that they need some advice, then give them advice. In but once they, way. yeah, in a constructive <laughs> way. Mm -hmm. But then once they start to go, the route that they were originally going and they didn't listen to your advice. Mm -hmm. I think your uh, job as a friend from there is to just be supportive in any way that you can. Yeah, and that's just going back to the 
you can't force someone to change. Mm -hmm. They have to make the decision for themselves. And going along with that, like a quote that we, me and my husband listen to a lot is loving people where they're at. So you just have to understand that they're at a different stage or different thought process or whatever it is, but you just need to love them where they're at. And a lot of times just loving someone is going to do a lot more help mm -hmm. than trying to fix them. Yes, because then that never works. No, it doesn't. <laughs> In any relationship, that no. doesn't work. <laughs> and the next thing that I had written down is that being a woman or a mother or a wife is not a competition. No. Yes, I'm gonna set this down because this is serious. This is gonna take both hands. Seri Probably yes. all four hands. Four? Oh, both of us, okay. <laughs> so this is something that I think is the biggest struggle with women um, that kind of intertwines all the other things that we're yes. mentioning. Yep. Is because that women look at other women and they say, you know, because she doesn't keep her house clean or because she doesn't breastfeed her child or because she doesn't, you know, do all these things naturally or maybe she's homeschooling and this parent's not homeschooling means that she's a bad mother or that if this woman doesn't have a fully cooked meal every time her husband comes home, that means she's a bad wife. Um, or just women in general, maybe she puts a lot of makeup on and she doesn't put a lot of makeup on. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's just, yeah, it, it's things like that. Like things that when you say them out loud, it sounds so stupid. Yeah. <laughs> to get upset over. Yeah. But my more specifically, I think, is wives tend to be more competition-like. Mm -hmm. um, just because they look at other wives and they're like, well, I do this and you don't do that. Why isn't your house always clean? Why aren't you always cooking for your husband? Well, that comes down to mainly that every relationship is different. Every marriage is different. Every parent-to-child relationship is different. For my husband, he doesn't care if there's a home-cooked meal every time he comes home. Right. He would rather eat Chipotle every day if he could. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. And maybe for another husband, he really cares about that. So just because maybe you're the wife that husband really cares about making a meal every day, just because another wife doesn't, doesn't make you a better wife or a worse wife. It's just yeah. different. <laughs> and I've also seen parents do that. Like yeah. from one mother to the other mother, like all of my friends are mothers. I hang out in like mother groups. Mm -hmm. So I am kind of like a fly on the wall sometimes because <laughs> I don't have kids uh -huh. that I kind of just like see how they interact. And um, I think that mothers sometimes like get on other mothers like, oh, why are you doing this for your kid? Or like they just yeah. get on how they're raising their kids. Mm -hmm. And that's because that's what works for their kid. And if that mother who's criticizing were to do everything that the mother that they're criticizing is doing for her kids, it, it probably wouldn't work yeah. because her kids are <laughs> different. really different. Yeah. And I think as a mother, you know what your kids need and you know them better than anyone else. And so you know what is good for them. So an outside friend who's saying, oh, well, that's not good for my kid. Why are you doing it for your kid? Mm -hmm. It's like, because this is my kid and I know who they are and I know what they can take and I know what's best for them and yeah. you do what's best for your kid. Yeah. Why are you asking me? Anyway. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that comes down a lot to personalities too, is that um, we read a book, if you watch our vlogs, we've read a book several times called Personality Plus. And there's four different temperaments and you can be a mix of some of them. And so for a child, that's what we call choleric, uh, which is kind of like um, they wanna do what they wanna do now. They're very stubborn and hard headed and they want their very vocal about it <laughs> or if you have a phlegmatic child that's just really easy and laid back and you know doesn't really care just goes with the flow those are going to be two totally different parenting styles yes and unfortunately a lot of people just don't know that there are different temperaments and you deal with those different temperaments in different ways and that's why people have adjusted their parenting to how it will work for them yeah but instead like mothers come in and they're like why aren't you putting your kid in timeout for that i would put my <laughs> kid in timeout for that and it's yeah. like that's because your kid has a personality that works with timeout. But yeah, my there's kid, other kids that you put them in timeout and it they're going to do it even more. And so, so. just be supportive. Don't yeah. try to like force your will onto someone else. It's not a competition. Yeah. Just be supportive of everyone around you. And then the whole marriage thing is we actually <laughs> just retook the five love languages test. Um, is that every person has a different love language. So for my husband, his love language main one is words of affirmation. So the way that I'm a good wife to him is to tell him that I respect him, that I appreciate everything he does for me. Those are the kind of things that I tell him that make him feel loved. Mm -hmm. You know, just making him dinner or um, just giving him a hug isn't going to do the same things that it might do for another guy that that's important to them. So yeah, yeah and you can't know what another spout like what another couple's love languages are unless you're them so if somebody like were to get on her for like 
why didn't you why didn't why wasn't the house spotless when Ryan came home is because that's not his love language and the person who maybe says that maybe their husband has yeah. that love and language and so they're like freaking out because so, yeah they don't understand they're like my husband would be so angry if I didn't do that it's because yeah. your husband's love language is acts of service yeah but that's not mine but just assume yeah going forward in life <laughs> that everyone knows what's best for them mm -hmm. and that you don't need to like force yourself on them or criticize them yeah. or be in a competition with them just be loving and supportive and be loving of supportive and supportive of yourself as yeah. well you don't need it doesn't need to be a competition no it really it doesn't. doesn't it's just so pointless said that at the same time. <laughs> it's just so pointless yeah. life would just be so much easier for women because men men are very different they are just kind of like whatever like mm -hmm. if you do something different that's cool it's because you do something different yeah. but for some reason women just don't think that way it's you know you should be doing things the same way I do yeah um, but men are just like whatever <laughs> yeah and I think that it's hard being a woman I'm just gonna say it and we should all be supportive of each other yeah like why does it have to be so competitious and like strong-willed and mm -hmm. fighting each other and putting each other down yeah. and criticizing each other like let's all just get along and just, love each other just hug love is all you need say I love you like this if you're by another woman just give them a hug and yes say, I love that it. right now <laughs> so the last one that we talked about kind of has to do with what we just discussed and that's that everyone is human and everyone has insecurities and this is a huge part of it too. Um, I think women tend to point out, you know, what they, like we're saying, what you're doing wrong. So for instance, I get a lot of comments from haters, whatever you want to call them, that my house isn't clean all the time. That's an insecurity of mine because I hate cleaning and sometimes I feel like a bad wife because I don't keep it clean all the time. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Even though I know and my husband tells me over and over again because it's not his love language, that it doesn't matter to him, especially because he's the one that makes a mess. <laughs> <laughs> Which he's told you guys that before, that it becomes a mess because of him. <laughs> um, but it's not important to him, and he can tell me over and over and over again that it doesn't matter to him, but I still feel like I'm a bad wife, and then it just adds to it when I see all these other wives commenting, saying, why isn't your house clean? Why isn't it always like this? Why aren't you always cleaning things? And it just makes it worse. And so that's a big thing is remembering that every woman has different insecurities and more likely than not, whatever you're pointing out that you think is wrong with that woman, they know it. <laughs> and they're already insecure about yes, it. Yes, they're already insecure about it. And so by you pointing it out, it's just making it worse and it's not helping them at all. Yes. Like she said, if it's not positive, don't say it. You pointing it out is just making them go deeper into that insecurity and weirdly enough maybe not want to work on it because right. I think a lot of people when they see people being down on them and something they already insecure about they kind of just go more into a turtle shell mm -hmm. <laughs> and are just like all right I'm not doing it at all then yes and yeah it's just kind very of a never-ending so. cycle yeah I think it's definitely very important to remember that everyone is human and everyone has insecurities I think that the reason why people nitpick each other and give each other digs and attack is because they're insecure. Yes, that's another thing. And being insecure is a very kind of vulnerable position to be in. It's vulnerable, but it's normal. Yes. That's another thing. I almost like kind of see it as like, you're already down. Would you kick someone else when they're down yeah. with you? Like if you're both hurting, would you then attack that person if they were right there hurting with you? Yeah. And I think that that's really where we all are because we all have our own insecurities and we're all right there with each other hurting in our own ways. Mm -hmm. But women don't see that. They think that they're the only one who's hurting. Mm -hmm. So then they think that they need to kick the person who's next to them down so that they can be on the same level as them. So that way they don't feel even more insecure that they're on the floor hurting and this person's like up dancing. <laughs> like if this is a weird analogy. Yeah. No, no, <laughs> but I'm just sure. realize that the girl who's next to you, even if she's Looks, absolutely like gorgeous yeah. or if she just has everything all together, she is hurting too in some way. Yeah. She has some kind of insecurity. She has something that she doesn't like about herself. She has something that she's working on. And so instead of kicking her when she's down because you think that you're the only one hurting yourself, why don't you just be supportive of her and mm -hmm. love her for love her for everything yeah. that she is? The things that uh, make you insecure about yourself, like if she's 10 feet tall and gorgeous, <laughs> like love her for that. 
also love her for her flaws and just be supportive because we're all women we all have insecurities mm -hmm. we're all human we're all working on it it's not a competition and yeah. just remember and i think that when you remember that everyone else has flaws it's kind of like who are you to judge basically yeah. if you think about it in that you have insecurities you have flaws just like everyone else so why is it your place to tell someone else what theirs are? I think in a weird way, it can also help you have more confidence. Yeah. Like for example, my husband sometimes can get a little shy and like it's hard for him to like go into a big group of people. Mm -hmm. So we went to a church activity and there was like 20 tables set up and everyone was sitting at a table having dinner and we walked in late and I had to go help with the dinner. And so he had to just walk in and like find somewhere to sit with mm -hmm. someone. And he was really nervous and I said, there's probably someone out there who's feeling nervous too and who wants somebody to sit next to them. And then like his spirits got lifted up and he was like, oh, okay. And then he <laughs> went and found someone just like that and he sat with them. Mm -hmm. And it made him feel so much better going into that situation, knowing that everyone in there wasn't perfect and like, personality of like Santa Claus <laughs> and that there were other people in there who were probably nervous and shy too and so yeah. just by realizing that it helped him go in there with more confidence and it helped him find someone who's feeling the way that he was feeling and then they both got to uplift each other mm -hmm. so I think that when you go into a group of women I think sometimes just remembering hey these girls are human too yes they yeah. may not look it and they may look like they have it all together and then you start to feel insecure and so then you feel the need to go in and attack because you need to like bring them down to your level if you go in there knowing that they're already on your level and that <laughs> nobody's higher or lower than anyone we're yeah. all starting out at the same level you can kind of have more confidence to where you don't need to feel like you need to attack them yes Exactly. That was a long thought. Just what she said. Yes. <laughs> the last thing I was just going to say was that when people are insecure, which is every woman, they kind of go about it usually two different ways. One, they either, like she said, they look at whoever looks happier than them in life and they try to bring them down to their level. Or they look at the people that are happier in their life and they try to figure out what they're doing to get there. And I think that is the mindset every woman needs to have, not the first one. <laughs> I have, and I don't know that this is true, but in my mind, I say that there's a difference between being jealous and being envious. Yeah. I think that jealous is very negative and dirty, and it's like, you have that, and I don't like you for it, and I'm gonna give you digs, and I'm gonna try to bring you down, and mm -hmm. I'm gonna make you feel bad about yourself because I'm jealous about you. And then I think that envious is like, I see what you have, and I wanna be there someday, so I'm gonna, mm -hmm be nice to you and I'm gonna use you in, as an example yeah. and I'm gonna sit you down and be like, hey, how'd you get to where you are? I mm -hmm. wanna be like that too. I think that it's perfectly fine to be envious if you're doing it in a healthy way and you're not trying to drag that person down yeah. because you're feeling bad about yourself but you're just looking at them as like an example. Mm -hmm. Yeah, don't don't look at the people that are happier, that, that are seem happier than you. And I say seem because they might not be. Um, that you know you need to bring them down because everyone should be feeling how you feel. That that's not fair at all. Um, and you definitely should try going through life looking at the people that are where you want to be, and look at them for an example and as like a mentor basically. I mean you don't necessarily have to ask for them to mentor with you, <laughs> right. but you can just watch not creepily watch them and see how they interact with people and to see why they are so happy. You yeah. know what I mean? <laughs> I think that if you do that, if you see someone that seems happy and you, instead of try to drag them down, you become friends with them, mm -hmm. which is really hard to do. Yeah. I've seen girls that intimidate the crud out of me and I have tried to be friends with them because I knew that I could learn so much from them. And I've learned through doing that, that they appreciated it. We've become strong friends and that they appreciated me doing that because then they learned stuff from me. And that it's has like, to do with weeding your garden too. Yes. It's so true that um, you become the people that you hang out with. Very true. So if your whole garden is full of weeds, you become a weed. Yeah. If your whole garden is full of beautiful flowers, you become a beautiful flower. Yeah. We are all on the metaphors today. Yeah. I was thinking so of Alice in Wonderland. Wonderland. I, I haven't even seen that movie all the way through. Is she a weed? She's, it's, it's supposed to be like she's on drugs. I think. Oh no. <laughs> no, she goes into the garden and um, all the flowers are saying, is she a weed? Oh. Anyhow. I don't know. I think she's a wild I just flower felt like that was reason. secretly a movie all about being on drugs. Oh yeah, for sure. <laughs> yeah, for sure. Uh, I was going to say something though. Dang it, what was it? I don't know. 
Um, about having flowers in your garden that week. Yes. Um, and think of the dandelions, because those are still pretty, as like the new friends that are coming in that want to learn from you. Yes. You know? There you go. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so, uh, yeah. Just be supportive and loving. And like I said, if you see someone who intimidates you and so I feel like this is another weird analogy. You guys ready for it? <laughs> you ready? Okay. I feel like sometimes women, there's women who smell beautiful, like some kind of soap from Soap and Glory, like all flowery and mm -hmm. stuff. And then in comes walking a girl that smells like garbage. <laughs> and then she looks at those girls and it's like, they smell like Soap and Glory flowers. Soap and Glory is like a really yeah. pretty smelly yeah, soap. Pretty smell. um, so instead of me trying to smell like them, I'm gonna get them to smell like me. And so then they, she goes up to those people with a whole bunch of garbage. All over them. Yeah, with a whole <laughs> bunch of garbage in her hands and just like dirties them up so that everyone smells like garbage. And then those people are like, what the heck, get out of my life. Why are you like bringing all this garbage to me? And it's uh -huh. just because that person is trying to make the other people be on their level and like smell like garbage. Yeah. Whereas what you should do is just be like, hey, you smell really nice. Oh, I use soap and glory. Oh, can I use that? And then hop your butt in the shower. Bam. And smell like them and be positive with them. Like, why are you gonna be like, that would be the best metaphor I've ever heard. <laughs> why are you gonna like, try to bring everyone down to your yeah. level when you can just be friends with them and learn from them and get exactly. up to their level, which is positivity and love and light and peace and happiness and like I said before, chances are those people will be happy that you did so because they have something to learn from you because mm -hmm. nobody has all 10 pieces. So you no. might be looking at a girl that has all eight pieces, but you have the two pieces that she's missing. Mm -hmm. So if we all are just loving and supportive of each other, we can just help each other and uplift each other and make each other stronger. And really that's what we should do. Exactly. You can cut that metaphor out. No, I thought it was hilarious. I'm leaving it, <laughs> leaving it in. <laughs> I think it's beating a dead horse at yeah. this point. <laughs> so we were going to recap, but we think you guys get the point. Yes. We hope. Because <laughs> all of the points that we've said kind of are all kind of the same point, just a different Reworded. aspect of it. But you can watch the video again if you want to take notes. So that's it for the video, guys. We hope you enjoyed it. We hope you learned something out of our crazy metaphors and bazillion different descriptions of the same thing and also let us know if you have any tips because I am always yeah. looking for different ways because it is something that I work on like the tip that I gave of think about what your intent is first I stop myself from saying a lot of stupid stuff because before I say it, even with my husband before I say it, I think to myself what is my real intent with this comment I love hearing different ways that you can be supportive because it really helps you in life it helps yeah. you in your work environment it helps you in your marriage it helps you in your family it helps you with your friends to learn how to be more supportive so let us know if you have any uh, tips yourself okay so that is going to be it for the video guys and I will see you guys whenever i'm not sure when i'm putting this up so i may already have a baby maybe it'll be like a baby update i don't know because we're You're like you sure you should put it up when you have a brand new baby and you don't have time to make another video this Smart. is like your backup video that you have in your back pocket that's already edited so if you're seeing this i had the baby, baby. Yeah. <laughs> all right we will see you guys next well i will see you guys next time and if she comes back then she will see you guys but of course i didn't even mention go into the description box below and go check out Brittany or on her face. Click it. Click the beautiful face. <laughs> and then you can go subscribe to her. So we will see you guys next time. Bye. Bye. So Brittany is going to do her first Wait, two. Sorry, I, I still have my hands on my boots. <laughs> <laughs> have we much? actually made points? Or are we just rambling? No, we've made points. Okay. All right, that's we've good. made all of our points. <laughs> okay. Whoa. Down. Have you ever eaten a mint before? It's not good. Mm -mm. No. <laughs> not like a <laughs> jelly bean. Look at her, just keeps on getting better with her hand in mine So we're walking by the shore, I've got something to say But words can't describe the way that I feel when I look in her eyes Cause